Right, now, if you're a regular follower of this channel, uh, or if you've come over from, where's this channel? One Lonely Farmer. Or even if it's just your first time having a look around, welcome. Now, before we go too far, make sure you stay, because at the end of this video, I'll be asking you a question, and I want to know what your opinion or answer would be. So make sure you stick around for that. Anyway, look, this is a John Deere 175, right? The 6R series. And it's the latest incarnation of uh, John Deere's lineup. Now you can see from that styling and that coloring, it's almost a bit of a retro nod back to the John Deere's of the 1960s. And I really like that. And then Deere moved on with the like the 10 series, the original 10 series and the 20 series. And then by the mid sort of 1970s, you had the 30 series and the legendary tractors and models such as 4430. But where would you find one of them? America. Right, muckers. Well, I'm wrapped up here because it's really cold. Um, really is cold you might recognize some of this stuff we're obviously here at Wes's one lonely farmer and if you remember on a video I did a couple of years ago stood outside in the grass and undergrowth just being neglected was this 4430 now there'd better be a really good reason why this old girl has parked up I assume if Wes hasn't got it running there, there probably is but I want to know why I don't know, maybe there's a bird's nest. Will it start? But the one thing I know is if it will start and it will run, Wes will get round to it. Um, 44.30 though, I mean, that is two wheel drive, obviously. Um, really straight condition. So today's question is, the John Deere 44.30, will it start? Yeah. So yeah, I would, I would actually uh, just make sure we've got fluids in the right places, that the oil looks at least reasonable. It's a normal sludge or water. I haven't even put a step on the side, don't know. Well, the next thing we need to then do, because we can't get a wrench or a pair of Stilson's on either the shaft or the crank pulley. So we do, we've got to assume it isn't seized. The only way we're going to find that out is to put some power to it yeah, just enough just to flick it. Yeah. We can do that. Right. If it flicks and it turns, that's that's where we go. Right. Then what we'll do we we'll then see if we've got fuel to the right places, right. go for a start. If it starts, if it starts, I, I would run this for an hour or two. If it's good and she's settled, I would then invest in your fluids, your oils, coolants fuel fillets and all that. Exactly. Everyone does it. The yeah. first thing they do is they, they change all the fluids, spend hundreds and then go, should there be a cylinder head on there? Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, 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 yeah. You know. yeah. But we're not from Florida. That would be quite the shock if there it was would. a cylinder head on there. <laughs> but we're not from Florida. So I well, know the stick is bad. It's going to leak like a mother. Well, don't worry about that as long as it's oh, got something. It's, it'll be fun. Wow. Well, it would be full if it was full of water, I can tell you that. No, no, of course. It smells all right. Yeah. It actually feels good. Yeah. It's not actually that bad, Wes. So, uh, yes, we'll work on that. Right, coolant. You, you've got leaky hoses on this, so she's yeah, not going to have any coolant. We're not going to run for that. We don't hour. need that to start. We can no. run for four, five, ten minutes, wherever. Right. Um, yeah, no, till it seizes. When it seizes, we'll stop. Yeah, that's it. It'll be it's an automatic so, shut off. You need to worry about that. <laughs> right. Um, well, if that's the case, the next thing is we're going to have to see if we've got. Because she's free. Right. She's got the flapper on. It should prevent the water getting in there. It's a little off, sir. I can say it, but you know. The problem is we can't get anything in here to, to check, which I normally do. Um, I think if the water was getting into it, it would have filled that, that oil pan would have been full of water. Over the time, how, yeah. how long has it been stood? Nine, nine years. Nine years, it hasn't moved. It has not moved. You Somebody did. may go back and say, yeah, you did six to eight years ago. But for, honestly, my son Joe was 14 years old when he had the problem with that wheel. Now, 
I don't know if it got drove to where it set or whether it got but, drugged to where yeah. it set. But it was out at the other end of the barn. You think you've got a bearing gone. Oh, I right? know there's a bearing, yeah, yeah. yeah. And that hasn't healed itself in those nine years. It hasn't. Actually, I mean, we've been waiting. For, Just waiting. Yeah. You've given up now, haven't you? You're yeah, gonna, so I'm going to have to rip it. I'm going to have to. So, you dragged this in here then. We did. Where it stood out there, didn't That's I? where it stood. It's in the grass there, yeah. yeah. Right, should we try and get a power box put on there? So I got a battery. I got a couple of 12 volt batteries over there. Um, you just grab them and. Okay. Uh, I am shocked. It's got six volt batteries on 77. Even our. Right, you remember the little one, the little John Deere I dragged out of that hexi iron wheels? Right. 21 third, 1977. Right, 76, year. 77, around the same year, right? 12 volts. 12 volts. If you get six volts, how the fuck do I do that? I put the hot side, it does, it jumps across. I gotta put the hot wire. You have a link cable. You put the hot wire to the ground, don't we? On that? Because it, yeah, hot this wire. This one here is your positive. Yeah. So you go positive straight to there. Yeah. And then the other one goes to the ground. Yeah. To the to the to the track. That, that might work. Well, let's if see. it goes bang, we'll have another thing about that. Oh, it'll. It, somebody smoked it at some point. Somebody. Well, it wasn't me. Oh, it wouldn't be. Yeah, never. <laughs> <laughs> I know exactly what I'm doing at all times. So nine years ago, who would it have been? Not him. Not him. Uh, we could blame it on Tim. That works. You good with yeah. that? Yeah, Tim would do that. He, Tim he'd fuck come out with a fucking golf cart that's 36 volts and hook it right up. Right. Yeah, here we go. It'll start, and then things start smoking, and then he'll run home, eat something, but and come back later. <laughs> That's how he does. Yeah, it's terrible. We're picking on him again. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so we'll go live to there and to ground. Yeah. To give ourselves 12 volts. Let's see. We're kind of hot now, so. Yeah. Let's see if we got it. Do a lot of spark. What, <laughs> what the fuck is that full of? Water? <laughs> That's, that's awesome. That's amazing. <laughs> that battery. Yeah. That battery is dead. We're gonna put that's that's brilliant. Nice. Sometimes it may be good. Sometimes it may be shit. Just some extra parts that shouldn't be there. Yeah. Assuming that these have got any juice in them, but they're no, brand no. new. Right, wait. So you got your battery on. I got mine on. Uh, assuming they've got some power in them, I'll just put these on here for the moment. Maybe. Yeah, I didn't charge them, I just picked them up yesterday. They could be flat dead. Uh, right, so just so everybody knows, because normally we'd get a wrench on air spanner uh, or a pair of grips on the shaft to drive the coupling, but we can't get access. So we're going to have to just bump this on the start and see if it turns. If it doesn't, then we're into bigger issues, and this ends right here. And I said, time for coffee and donuts. Yeah, pretty much. We'll figure something else out. I'm thinking. Right. Thinking. I'm thinking it's, it's gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna turn. All bets are off. All bets are off. Well, let's see. Right. Do not do that. Very light. Oh. All right. So we did it. You will now we'll just, just pump the ram slowly. Anything else, make sure that we are good, nothing's stuck, nothing's in place, that it shouldn't be. We've done, we've got oil. Yeah. We've got oil. Have we got fuel? Well, there's fuel, there's fuel to the pump. Because the thing is, you hear this all the while, people go, oh, this thing was full when, I, when they stopped at last, and you're like, right, and then you find out it's empty, and then they go, no, that was the 44 Ford, I remember. We checked. Tank's got fuel on it. Tank's got fuel So, I tried to use this primer pump. Yep. It is shot. Okay. I have a new one. I took it off, fuel came pouring out of it. You can see that it poured out of it. Okay. So, there's fuel that's running freely from the tank to, to the primer pump. And I see some bubbles coming here. Yeah. So, there's 
glass filter units that they have on the John Deere, you take that all off and you put an element in there. That's clear. So, we stuff this fuel in there. Well, look, should we assume, and I know you should never, should we assume we've got enough fuel for here? If not, we can swap that one out. Yeah, we can swap it out in seconds, but I'd say we... Uh, we go uh, for it? Yeah, give it a few minutes. Have you got funny ether? Oh, of course. <laughs> That's good then. And I'm happy to try it without first. Well, Cosby was here about an hour ago. He dropped this off in the case. Right, okay. So we know everything's free, everything's out of the way. We don't have air con now, unfortunately. That is a shame, I think. I think so. Just throw it off. That just means it's going to cost it me just throw it off? It just broke it. Yeah, just, I heard it snap when you bumped it. Oh, really? Yeah. That is, yeah. Yeah, so that compressor seized, which I, I kind of, we're going to have this thing completely, I'm going to have it ready to go. Uh, I'm going to. If you want to use this on the like, hay rake or whatever. Yeah, so I do. What a lovely practical. Yeah, yeah, because it's, all right, so you take one of the expensive ones. Yeah. You know, and it, they drink more fuel. Yeah. Uh, yeah, they're more comfortable, but so what? These are not uncomfortable. They're not. I mean, with the air conditioners, when they work, you're cold in there. I always was. But right. you are at the moment. Nah, well, it's, it's cold enough out here. You know, I wouldn't know if the heat's going to work. But we didn't check the radio. I don't think. Well, you, you said that's. No, I don't think it's any cool. Oh, fuck, it's cool. Well, how come you still have the spin? Well, you see where I did that after yeah. engineering in there? Yeah. So we have got to. Yeah, there's cool in there. It is, it's green. I didn't open it up, I just felt it that. It could just be so full of sludge that it's just stuff on the top. Yeah, that That's good, good actually. Yeah. I'm surprised. I thought you said that they were split. The hose had split. You repaired it. I repaired it like nine years ago. Probably 10, 12 years ago. That's still good. Yeah, because you can see where I put the pipe in. There's a piece of pipe. You see the clamps? Oh, and it's held together by a couple of wire ties. Because what had happened, you can see what happened. The hose got up against the air compressor and just chewed, and it chewed through, and that's what that's how I fixed right. it. Let's let's have a little look. Yeah, it's dangerous. Very good. You say when? You want, you want my to I got a secondary filter in there, so it'll be fine. Just give it a go. All right, Tell me if you want some snot. about five and a half cylinders. You hear that? One Three. There's one one valve sticking, I can hear it. Yeah. You hear it? <laughs> systems are collapsing. Eat a bag of shit. You suck. That's pretty much the point, sir. Not much gray area in this one. Feed those bald eagles. Which ones? All those ones we just let out. <laughs> this is actually the first time in my career that we've released three bald eagles at one time.
because I've got it running. Your task now, over on your channel in the next few weeks, is to completely do all the movement things and whatever, which you'll do, fill as well. Yep. But the best bit is to be the work on the back axle, because that's the, why it was parked up originally. Right. You yeah. think that's the bearings are gone. There's, years ago, like a lot of years ago, this happened on the other side. Yeah. And what had happened is there's this triangle like nut yep. in there. I don't know if you've ever messed with those. And there's a jam nut in there and it loosened up. And it actually allowed the axle to slide out and those taper bearings did that. Could have happened on this side as well. I don't know, but sitting for so many years, we're just gonna take the axle, take the tire off, take the rim off, pull the axle out, and, and just but no, it definitely needs a new seal anyway. So it's you're going to do that. Yeah, yeah. You're going to do it anyway. Because this is where I think we mock you a lot for having such old, outdated, low-spec tracks that we do in Europe, which is why you put it. But, hang on a minute. We just resurrected a big value item there because to put it on a rope, all you need, there's still a good track to air con, to sound up, two cab, everything. She's nimble got the power, hang on a minute, or 
Alternative B, to get that sort of power, you could go and spend fifty, sixty thousand dollars If you want it. So why would you? You just drag out the metal, there's a little bit of input and work from you now, and you've got a fantastic track, a working track. My grandmother's track. And that's the nice thing about it. I hope you all enjoyed this, which was probably one of the most simple, straightforward will it starts I've ever done, but probably one of the most satisfying because we're just giving Wes his childhood tractor bag. So that's really nice, and it did sound really good. But um, yeah, let's face it, it wasn't an engine issue anyway, it was, it's an actual issue. And that one is where I leave you because it's where you're on your own with that. Yes, yeah. yeah that's, that's you don't have enough time. I if I was over here for another week, we could do it. Oh, yeah. So, was that the most difficult will it start I've ever done? No. But here's the thing. It's not always about being a struggle or a challenge. Sometimes it, the actual reward is the fact that the engine is just so loyal. I mean, that tractor had been stood in all elements for nine years outside, not an undercover, been stood out in all weathers. Now, despite all that, it still fired up with relative ease and ran like a dream. Now, question time. If you had to spend a season at Wes's on one of his tractors, which one would it be? Would it be the 7530? Or would it be the 4960? Or would it be the 4430 once it's up and running? You know what to do. Put your answers in the old squid pit in the comments section below this video. So, now the 4430 is running, Wes is obviously servicing it and he's going to change bits that are broken. And then there's the big task. Let's not forget this. Getting it running was relatively easy compared to what he's now got to do. He's got to repair that back axle, which was the reason it was parked up originally. So go over to Wes's channel, One Lonely Farmer, and you can continue to watch the progress of the 4430 as Wes gets stuck into it and sorts out um, bigger issues. Anyway, dog, we better go, better we, huh? Yes, we'll go. Thank you all for watching, and uh, we'll see you again. Do well.